Hi, psychologies. Hello, everybody that's there. I'm going to put my phone off. Um, it's a glorious evening, and I hope that you are well and happy. And I suspect that quite a lot of you are going to watch this after the football, because let's be clear, it's seven o'clock on Wednesday night, and uh, tonight is the kickoff right now of the biggest match that has hit this country for a very long time however i'm gonna trust that not everybody wants to watch the football and that some of you are here there's some of you already hello and uh and for the rest of you when this eventually goes on to the psychology's page later there'll be a different energy either there'll be joy or there'll be grief and either way right this second i'm super aware of the fact that there's this enormous sense of anticipation everywhere it's really interesting so what i want to talk about is tapping into this idea that even though we live in these kind of narrow uh senses of ourselves there's actually this really extraordinary vast energy going on all the time that we can choose to connect with or not um casey not interested in the match <laughs> We may win, we don't know, but I'm so glad you're here. Hey Nick, nice to see you, nice to see you there. So here's what I wanna talk about. I've been thinking about this idea of murmurations, you know, when birds all in a flock all suddenly do this amazing dance. There's some absolutely beautiful videos of it where they all suddenly turn into this kind of incredible force of unification and, beauty and flow and it happens with shoals of fish and I'm not a football fan I'm not going to watch the match I'm going to yoga after this but there is also so I've never even been to a football match but I'd quite like to go just because I would like to experience that thing that becomes a Mexican wave that's really my main reason for wanting to go that idea of loads of humans all coming together okay they're in two halves so there is a split but everybody's energy suddenly becoming aligned to be this amazing moment like a murmuration like a shoal of flesh fish not flesh or changing direction at the same time and i find and i'm sure we all do that we spend a lot of time kind of trapped in our own little reference points trapped in our own realities even if we have this extraordinary way of connecting with the world, with so many people. I'm connecting with you by virtue of this extraordinary creation that makes this possible. My computer, Facebook, psychologies, all these different things happening right now to facilitate this communication. But despite that, a lot of us live in isolation in our heads, in our worries, in our concerns and we feel like we're separated and that's one of the things about increased digital uh, addiction is that we spend a lot of time not connecting with our neighbors or with ourselves but with our screens i'm guilty of it as are we all and there are great advantages to it like this one right now as well as disadvantages but what i want to explore is what if you could shift from this narrowness, from this sense of being alone. See, I, I live alone, right? I, this is my boat. Can you see my pretty boat? Look how pretty my boat is. It's so nice. Um, I'm not going to flip around the camera, but believe me, it's very beautiful, sunny evening. I live alone. I like living alone. <gasps> I'm hearing a cheer. That says that England just scored. <laughs> you see, I'm part of a bigger picture. Even, there you go. Right here, right now, in this moment, I am alone, isolated, and yet there is a sense of, there's a shout. <laughs> Joy. That's a good thing. Let's say that we scored then. So I'm, this is what I'm talking about. This, this idea of going, on one hand, we are in our skins we are in our routines we have our commitments we have our jobs we have our lives we have our um we have our unique path in the world and there's a beauty to emphasizing our unique and extraordinary gift and offering that in the way that only we can that is only possible by virtue of our particular combination of experiences and skills and passions 
and the challenges that we've overcome and the triumphs that we have experienced and the particular things that touch our heart, the things that make us absolutely unique, the things that when we die will be cited in our eulogy as the things that will make people miss us the most. Those really beautiful, poignant things that are only us on one hand. And then at the same time, what if that we had what if we had this idea of having a completely connected experience where in addition to our unique individuality, we're also part of something massive, like that big roar that just happened out there. There's one example of it, but that's not the only way. Imagine if we were in a murmuration, uh, a flock of birds all moving in one because we kind of are, we may not even be aware of it, but we are actually part of this much bigger orchestrated flow. We know that there are many different influences on that. Some of them are overwhelming, some of them are negative. If you're, if you're in the habit of watching the news or listening to the news the first second you're awake, that's a, to my mind, I'm not saying don't be informed, but that to my mind is a bad way of connecting with the the most anxious and contracted, um, lose the scale. I'm not quite sure what that means, but hello. <laughs> and hi, Rena. And hello, Leslie. Um, not sure what you mean, lose the scale. Anyway, um, so the, um, yeah, where was I? So the idea that we can connect to this kind of global energy in good and bad ways, right? So I'm going to give you a good way. Here is an idea which I have been playing with for quite a long time and I run workshops in it sometimes, but mostly it's just a lens which I choose to put on sometimes and I do workshops around giving other people that lens. And that lens is pronoia. So pronoia is the opposite of paranoia. Paranoia is the belief that everything is against you, everything in the world is out to get you, everything's about as bad as it could possibly be. Pronoia, on the other hand, is the belief that everything in the universe is conspiring, maybe secretly, on your behalf to shower you with blessings. Now, neither one of those is the truth, but both of those are different ways of seeing the world. Now, the thing about the pronoia lens is if you try that on, what happens is you start to look at the murmuration around you. You start to look at the flow of coincidences and you start to look at the people that come into your life and the words that you hear or the music that crosses your path on a given day or the opportunities or the challenges as well that come as if they were designed for you. Now, I'm not saying that each one of us is the center of the universe, although maybe we are in, in all sorts of different ways, but just try this on as an idea. In any given situation, especially a challenging one, ask the question, what if this were for me? What if there were, and I'm not saying it's the truth, I'm just saying try it on as an idea. What if any given situation were actually weirdly configured to give you maybe the biggest learning you could have, or maybe the most unexpected blessing around the corner a few steps ahead that wouldn't be possible had you not gone through this part? What if something that happens that's really annoying or frustrating or crappy or sad or difficult or even worse, tragic? Hey, Denise, nice to see you. Um, I'm talking about the idea that we're part of a bigger picture. We're part of this big chanting football thing that's going on outside there is reminding me of our connection to a much bigger energy. And so I'm asking to uh, think about the idea of connecting with that thought of, rather than just tuning into the negative stuff around the world is in dire trouble and everything is stressful and there's a nightmare in every possible political, all of those things, what if, you focused on the idea that this is all secretly designed to conspire to shower you with blessings. What if this were for me? So we're part of something much bigger than we've ever been able to see before. Not that long ago, the work that I did uh, was I used to run, uh, I founded a not-for-profit which was about getting parents and children to connect through playing in nature. And when I was running that not-for-profit, my work was to connect with groups of about 20 to 30 people and we go on a residential and it was parents and kids and we go to the forest and basically the kids would teach the parents how to climb trees and make up stories and build dens and 
destroy dens and get into uh, pillow fights and um, have midnight feasts and play and have all of these lovely experiences together so that the parents were able to connect back with their own innate playfulness and calm and peace and safety and imagination and freedom and also a sense of wonder. And we got lush refunding and we did this amazing project and ran it for several years and in that time I could just about reach 30 people each time that was the absolute limit in terms of capacity it was quite an intense weekend in terms of how many places we could offer for free to people everybody came for free regardless of their background or their income and what happened was my reach was limited to this circle of super intimate lovely connections with people in this room in this forest in this magic place oh it's uh casey it doesn't exist anymore um the not-for-profit is dormant but now i'm doing a version of it which has so what i'm leading to is that now i teach in a different way so even a few years ago the way in which i could communicate was from the heart in a space where i was like i would make you tea and hug you do you know what i mean i could just well i still can make you tea and hug you if you want to come to the boat for a session but the way that it was set up, it was designed with a limit in there in terms of having a really, really um, small reach. And that, and what, what I realized was my dream was to have at least some impact on a vast scope of people, not just 20 delicious people over the course of three days in a forest, but 200, 2,000, 2 million, I don't know, to be able to at least translate this same essence, which was about wonder, about play, about creativity, about joy, about connecting from the heart, about remembering what it's like to be seven, about finding your um, profound, innate joy and sharing that with the people that matter to you the most but also connecting with that for yourself in your own life. And what I realized was that same kind of essence, given this amazing world in which we live, that same essence can now become part of a much bigger world. Everything that is happening around us, good and bad, is this vast sea of potential in a way that it never used to be. Imagine 100 years ago, you'd maybe 200 years ago you'd be born and live and marry and die in a very small location mostly most most people lived within a, a small world and now we have this vast capacity so i feel like sometimes it's like you, when you notice it when you when you remember to look up from your stresses and your your completely understandable private and intense and individual concerns about your work or the money or your kids or your health or your home or so any number of different things that very understandably kind of dominate your thinking and you kind of hike your gaze up and look out at the horizon and notice that actually there's a kind of there's a bigger wave there's a bigger there's a bigger space to draw on to 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 engage in to to um to be inspired by, to connect with, to uh, inhabit. And if you choose to see that as pro noia suddenly it all opens up into this amazing possibility. So my funding came to an end, the, the, the not-for-profit shut down. It was pretty tough at the time. And had I taken that as a kind of big ending, oh, Yes, Catherine, the forest totally does seem to connect people more. I would love to know more about your retreats. Do send me something. I, I, I run workshops in the forest too, but I haven't done a retreat for years. And I do day, short, half day workshops, but I'd love to know more. Send me a message. Um, so this idea that you can choose your perspective. We can have this individual concern and that's absolutely right because it's your honor to be inhabiting your own identity, your own story, your own gifts your own potential as fully as you possibly can. But then also notice those cheers coming from the pub. Notice that there's a murmuration happening. Notice that you're part of something bigger. I, for one, am quite hopeful, very hopeful. I mean, I'm kind of made that way. I am basically a pro-noyak. Um, I do kind of believe that, that this is a pretty good time to be alive. And it's an amazing time to be a woman. And uh, hello, Jared. Hey, from Paris. 
hello from London. Um, and we have uh, this space to open up into this different kind of way of exploring the world. And the, the very fact that I'm sitting here in my boat, chatting with people all over the world, is just an extraordinary example of exactly what I'm talking about. So the two things are, one, what if this were for me? Just try that on as a question in any given situation. When you stub your toe, when you, uh, I don't know, get a new job, when you, um, when you eat too much, when you eat too little, when you do anything, when you kind of go, okay, I feel like I'm just careering through these choices without any kind of navigation. But what if you decided to choose the pro lens and see all of them as stacking up because they're leading you in the perfect direction? So for example, when my not-for-profit lost its funding, what it did was it opened up the potential for me to reach many, many more people with the same keys to wonder, to joy, to um, paranoia, to creativity, rather than putting all of my time and energy into this tiny little uh, intense way of, of, of sharing. Uh, it, it ending gave me this space to allow for it to go out to you. So um, I, Given that the entire world, well, at least this part of the world, maybe not the entire world, but definitely this country and the city I'm sitting in are really focused right now on on a bunch of guys running up and down a field. It's funny, a friend of mine, she, she doesn't she doesn't care about the football. She calls it kickball. She's like, why would I care? Why would I care? Some guys are running from this end to that end or running from that end to this end, kicking a little ball around. And uh, I... I'm just curious about the energy. I'm curious about our ability to make a Mexican wave happen. I'm curious about our ability to suddenly all come together, to be in alignment, to make extraordinary things happen, to share inspiration, to make ideas come alive. And I love the fact that I'm living at a time when for the first time in human history, this is possible. Um, so one of the things that I'm doing in order to generate more of a reach is I, I've got it, I'm doing, I'm doing an online course, my first ever, and I'm loving it. It's from here on the boat. And the first, it's a four part course and it's hundred quid for all four or 30 quid a class. And they're live uh, from here and you get me. And uh, the first one has already happened, but there's a recording of it. It's called Rituals for Creativity. Loads of ways to tap into flow, which is kind of what I'm talking about. Bringing all of the stuff together from what I did with those families into this space. And then it's my thought about the game, but atmosphere in the right venues is great. I Yeah, you know, Casey is just making a comment about the fact that the, the, game, the game atmosphere is dependent. I... I'm just curious about human beings all coming together in hope and joy and heartfulness and connectedness, even if what they're doing is kickball, <laughs> to quote my friend. It's just that idea of there being this sudden moment where we all come together like a murmuration, like a flock of birds. And that alone, I think, is powerful and beautiful, and I want to be a part of it. I am a part of it. I don't need to watch the football to be a part of it. I'm a part of it by being here with you guys. So what if this were for me? Rituals for creativity is the first online course. The next one is rituals for, for self-care. So how can we bring our creativity and our artfulness and our really delicious, magical meaning making to those moments of me time where we actually step out of the constant stream of worries and uh, concerns and responsibilities and we take ourselves into a space where rather than just watching Netflix for six hours or getting drunk or just not being able to sleep because we haven't put our brain down. How do you create a ritual that suits you that can make you be more uh, deeply rested, more deliciously nourished, more uh, um, calm as you wake up, more um, connected to your commute to work and looking up instead of looking down or looking out and connecting with people and with yourself. All of those things. We're going to explore rituals for the everyday and then there's going to be one on rituals and work and one for rituals to make the world a better place. The link's in that, is it there? In the thing. So it's my name, Tida Han, and it's uh, the online course. So I would just invite you to explore this idea of your individual self inhabiting this murmuration of people cheering, right, not right this second, 
and being and living and moving and just notice that you're part of this much bigger flow. Even on those days when you feel really isolated and alone, you're part of something big. You've never been part of something bigger. This has never happened before. We've never been so connected. We've never inhabited such a tidal wave of, of ideas and changes and possibilities. And um, I, for one, am really quite excited to be alive at this time and to be sharing from my heart and from my boat with all of you guys. And it's 20 past, so I'm going to stop chatting. Please come and check me out, um, tudehan.com. The name's in the thing, T-I-U-D-E-H-A-A-N.com. Uh, I'm all about wonder and joy and heart connection and ritual design. And if you felt like coming on my online course, I'd be so delighted to see you there. And the other thing I want to say is Psychologies Magazine have this brilliant Life Leap Club, which is, uh, I think it's free to all subscribers. And it's a brilliant resource of tons of different kinds of support and meetups and coaches and stuff, including this lovely woman I met at the weekend called Kelly Pretty, who I met on the wonderful Denise Mortimer's uh, course, which was for abundant women. If anybody is thinking about setting up a business of any kind to do with being um, a woman in coaching, she is brilliant uh she commented earlier so you can go and find her there she's fantastic and one of the other participants was kelly pretty who is on the the psychology's life club life club leap life leap club life leap club team um and she is all about uh finding your soulmate and i'm gonna have a session with her tomorrow morning and um i'm really looking forward to that so Join the Life Leap Club and there's loads of resources. Check me out online. I'm on Instagram too. So my name on Instagram is T-I-U-D-E-H-A-A-N-1. And uh, whatever the outcome of the match, whether people are cheering or weeping, just know, oh, it is free to subscribers. Hey, Nina, I'm just about to go, but you can watch this later. Um, so yes, so uh, join me anywhere on this whole Facebook thing, join me on Instagram, whatever the outcome of the football, notice that it has this unique power to make us all move like a flock of birds, like a shoal of fish. And notice that even when there isn't football to connect us deliberately to cheering together in pubs, we are innately connected as well as divinely unique. Um, and it's that dance between our own perfect individuation and our part of this huge sea of experience that makes this life so very interesting. Um, I hope it, that the outcome is a good one for who, whatever team you're supporting. And I am going to go and walk through this beautiful sunny evening and go to yoga. So with that, lovely to see you all. And um, blessings. Try on the Pronoia lens. And... Um, see you oh you have nina oh that's good to know nice to see you there anyway i'm very glad anyway i'm gonna head um but lovely to see you all and subscribe to my website and check out the online course and see you again i'll be here again in a month 